This is my Softec Big Muff, which I rehoused a little while ago, and I added a tone bypass. Uh, I also replaced the pots so I could put my own knobs on, because any knobs other than the Softec, original Softec knobs, um, don't really work on the stock pots. And I also replaced all of the internal wire that goes to the pots and the foot switch. And when I did that, I reconnected all the components on the other side of the board. So I completely flipped the circuit board upside down in the housing. Because originally the input and output of the pedal were on the wrong side. The output was here and the input was here, which is not like every other pedal on mine and probably your pedal board. So, this is my friend's Black Russian soft tape big muff. And it is gonna be going in this. And while we're at it, we're gonna, like on my big muff, replace all the pots, add a true bypass foot switch, add a tone bypass, and a mid control. And we're also gonna swap the LED. The main reason I wanted to make this video is because there's surprisingly little information on how to true bypass one of these things. And it's well worth doing because the bypass sucks. So... That's what we're gonna be doing. Welcome. So I'm going to start by getting the LED out of the way. Alright, that's the volume pot done. So, when I did my Big Muff, I mapped out where all the pots go in relation to the terminals on the board. So all I'm doing is before I disconnect each wire I'm just making sure that it matches what I have on paper over there. So I know exactly uh, where to put the replacement ones. Okay I'm gonna do the tone control next. Tone control done. So now I've made a note of where these foot switch wires go to and now I'm going to pull them and then once I've got all the main components of the board I am going to swap in these components which are necessary to make the mid control work properly. So I've pulled the foot switch and now I've highlighted here which components need to be pulled for the mid control to work properly so I can see it's R8 which is this guy, C8 and C9 which are just there. Well that was a pain but we got there. One down. This guy's next. All right, that's that guy done. Now, the last one to go is this guy, which would be just here, because he is gonna be replaced with our mids knob. Alright, so now I've pulled those guys, we're going to swap in these guys. Alright, so that's C8 replaced. I'm going to get them both on the board and then flip it and solder them in. Just bending the legs. 
on the other side of the board so that when I flip it they don't just fall straight out. That one's not going anywhere. Alright, neither's that one. Now I'm going to do R8 next, which is a 470k resistor, but that is also where our tone bypass comes into the circuit. So I need to uh, also wire in or solder in uh, some wire to one of the pads of R8. So I am going to just tin this bit of wire and hope that I can somehow get it in the pad with the leg of the resistor. Excellent. There's just enough room in the pad for the leg of the resistor and our wire. While my camera was charging, I used the time to pre-wire all the pots, the toggle switch and the foot switch and get everything installed in the enclosure. Now, I've actually just remembered that this wire from the common lug on our mini toggle for the tone bypass needs to go to the center lug of our tone control. So what I'm actually gonna do is desolder this black wire off of our tone control, trim this down to a good size, and then rewire that black wire and this red one into the middle lug of the tone control. Oh, that was good. There we go. So because I've got all these parts already installed um, before the board goes in, I don't actually need too much slack on these cables. Famous lost words. So I know it looks like I've just thrown my adjustable spanner into this housing, but I'm actually using it to put some tension on the red wire so that the end sits nicely in the lug for soldering. Take up the slack. It's the phrase I was looking for. Alright, that looks good. So I know this looks a little um, rat's nesty, but using a different wire for every colour of each lug of each pot actually makes them pretty easy to distinguish, which is nice. It's, it's one of the things that makes the original wiring so tricky is that all of the wiring is the same colour. So now I've got this wire coming off of that resistor and that is going to go to our toggle switch and give us our tone bypass. <laughs> oh, and then she, she went to a different college. Uh -huh. She went to uh, Bryn... Right, I think I'm going to do the mids knob next. Now... Whoop. Alright, I think I'm going to do the mids knob next. So, this is the mids knob. To do this, all you need to do is wire a resistor or solder a resistor to this lug of your pot and then jump the other two and run a wire from either of those two jumped lugs. Our white wire which has the resistor on the other end is going to go to the pad nearest the top of the board and our red wire which goes to the other two lugs is going to go here. Turn from hopefulness to die someday so I gotta have a story that's gonna make this hard to just really go through divorces go through that you gotta be happy right? I know that you the input from our old foot switch came here on this trace um, but to do the true bypass mode we have to cut this trace and then take a wire directly to this lug so this part's kind of scary but I am gonna cut that trace now but I, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine and she was talking about the idea of something in her Okay, editing Alex from the future here. I realised in editing this video that I kind of brushed over a step that I didn't get to film. So you can see in the footage that the board in its original form has a little tab like this on a wire that grounds the housing. But the new housing that we're using doesn't really allow for a tab like this to be used. So I thought I'd show you my method for grounding the housing with a new enclosure. So I got rid of the original ground wire that had that tab on just because the wire was pretty horrible. So if you want to replace the ground wire like I did, then the first thing we're going to need to do is attach a piece of wire to our tab because we're going to be reusing it with the new method. 
All right, now don't worry about attaching this back to the board just yet. As you'll see in the footage, that was actually the last step that I did with this. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take a piece of wire that is long enough to go around the diameter of our foot switch with maybe an inch left on both ends. You can probably see where this is going. And then we're gonna to wanna to strip all of the plastic off of this wire. Once it starts fraying like this, you might wanna start twisting the strands together just before you completely strip the wire and you end up with hundreds of tiny wires. All right, obviously if you have access to bare wire, um, that does save this step, but it's not too laborious just to strip some. Now I would tin this at this point just to keep the strands together really nicely. Now the next stage is to wrap our bit of tinned bare wire around the foot switch. And now depending on how flexible your wire is after being tinned, you can either tie a knot or you can just twist the ends together. You don't want to do it too tightly just because you do want to still be able to slip this bit of wire over the foot switch. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. And what you end up with will be something resembling this. So now we just need to tin the twisted ends so that it keeps its shape nicely. Alright, I'll just give myself a bit of a neater end. I'm going to cut off the two loose ends just there. And I'm going to double check. Yeah, that still goes over my foot switch nicely. So now we want to grab this part again and this tab makes it really nice and easy to just twist the end of our little soldered noose around the tab. Now we just want to solder that in place. Okay, so if you wanted to give yourself a bit more flexibility you could use a longer piece of bare wire, but this would work nicely. So all you are going to want to do is just slide this back over your foot switch before you install it. And then when you install your foot switch, the bare wire will get uh, pressed really nicely into the bottom of the housing and you will have a ground connection. So this part's fairly straightforward. You just need to jump this bottom corner lug to the top center and this bottom center to this top corner. All right, so I've got my foot switch installed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach this ground wire. It needs to go to here as does this, which grounds the housing. So I'm actually going to twist these two ends together and then feed them through that pad and solder them in. Alright, now we need to take the wire from the centre lug of our volume pot to this bottom corner lug of the switch. All right, now this is the negative side of our LED, and that is gonna to go to this sensor left lug on the foot switch. All right, now this sensor lug of our switch needs to go to this third pad on the board. All right, now this wire on the middle right side of the switch needs to go to this pad 10 next to the ground. Now the last thing on the foot switch is we need to take this white wire to this lug of the input. So I'm going to strip quite a bit of this off and I'm going to wrap it around that lug as much as I can. All right. 
right, well, Jesus. So my friend hasn't chosen knobs for this yet. So I'm gonna just stick four random ones on that I've got lying around to test the pedal. All right, so I'm firing this thing up for the very first time and I'm a little nervous. All right, I'm getting signal through. So this is our sustain knob, this is our volume. This is our tone knob, which may be bypassed. Yeah. And this is our mids control. Oh my god. So the very last thing that I like to do with anything like this is just to put a date on the inside of the back of the housing. I don't really know why, but it seems fitting. So today is the 12th of the 12th, 2021. So now all that's left to do is put the screws in and we're done. You can do better than that, autofocus. I know it. Here's some behind the scenes trivia for this outro. I recorded nice audio, but it sounds like this. So I resorted to using camera audio. All right, and here's the finished product. Sam's had the pedal back for a little while now, and he's got some cool witch hatty knobs for it. I mic'd up the cab when he got to try the pedal for the first time. So there's a link in the description for a video with sound clips if you actually want to hear how this thing sounds But I wanted to just keep this video about the work itself really. I'm using a new camera um, But I recorded all the old footage on my old camera Which is a bit of a shame because I think the video would have been a bit more coherent if I'd got this sooner Because this one can film for up to 30 minutes But my old one would cut off after about 11 and it would also run a battery before I was done working for the day, which is why I didn't film certain parts like pre-wiring the pulse and foot switch. But we got there. And if you're thinking of attempting something like this, I would encourage you to do it. Um, because it's not as hard as you think it is if the information is out there and available to you. And I wish you luck. <laughs>